Welcome to Crafting with Kristen. Today we're gonna to be making a bleach studded and patched up battle vest. In my last video, Beginner's Guide to Battle Vest, I noticed that a lot of you were asking how I got the dye job on my denim vest. And I'm gonna be showing you in this video how to make that happen. I'm also gonna go over attaching the metal hardware and sewing on patches just like I did in the last video. So that way if you don't feel like flipping back and forth between videos, you can get it all done watching one tutorial. But if you want to support me, you're welcome to go back and rewatch that video here. So I got most of these patches either from when I've seen a band on tour or going on their official website and ordering it. And then I also got a bunch of other ones from Indie Merch Store. They're one of my favorite spots because everything's officially licensed. So you're still supporting the artists and you can get everything all shipped together because they have a ton of bands on their website. They didn't sponsor this video, but if they ever decide to, I would say yes to that. So get all your stuff together and let's make some cool clothes together. To start, you're gonna need some containers, safety goggles, some rubber gloves, water and bleach. I'm doing a diluted mixture. I highly recommend this because in the past, I've just used straight bleach on denim and then when I threw it in the dryer, it just turned to shreds and it was awful. But thankfully, I got it from a thrift store and it was not expensive. I don't do an exact water to bleach ratio, but about a cup to a large size container. You're gonna put all your denim in there and just let it soak for a while. It takes some time for it to lift the dye color, or if you manage to be lucky enough to find a light colored uh, denim vest or a white one, you can just go straight past this process and go straight to the dyeing. The sun will also be your friend in this process, so letting it sit out in the sun is good. After you've let it soak for a while in the bleach mixture, go ahead and run it through the wash. And next, we're gonna mix up some soda ash and some water according to the directions. I got this soda ash from Dharma Trading Company, which is linked in the description. Just mix it up well with some warm water according to the directions. This is gonna help your garments absorb the dye better. Now you're gonna soak it in this soda ash mixture and then lay it out in the sun until it gets nice and damp. You don't want it too dry or too damp. Now I'm mixing up the dye mixture with some warm water, urea, and the dye powder according to the directions. I also got this dye from Dharma Trading Company. They're really reasonably priced and the dye is great quality. You wanna make sure you mix it up really well so that way your color is even. Now that our dye is all mixed up, we're gonna lay all our garments into this container and I'm just gonna pour this mixture over it. And I'm just squeezing it to make sure that this all soaks up this nice blood red dye. And once you have everything nice and saturated, you're gonna let it sit in this mixture for about a day. Once your clothing items have sat in the mixture for about a day, you're gonna start rinsing it. I prefer to do all this outside so I don't get dye all over my house. This is a really tedious process. It takes forever to rinse all the dye out of here. At a certain point, I just kind of give up rinsing all the dye out and I get to a point where the water is running mostly clear and almost all the dye is out of the garment.
can see that the water is starting to run a little bit more clear than it was before, but I still got a couple more rinses in me before it's acceptable. You can see that the water is starting to run a pinkish color now. So this will be my last rinse. going to wash as you would normally would. Don't wash this with your regular laundry though or it will get stained with the dye. Now that we've got our vest all dyed up, now it's time to start adding some patches. So I got a whole bunch of patches and I just kind of start laying them flat until I get a design that I like. And once you like where everything is placed, you can start pinning it down. Careful not to pin through both sides of the vest. And the closer your sewing pins are together, the more flat and flush your design will lay and it'll make it easier when you're actually sewing. So it's more time consuming to lay down more pins, but you'll thank yourself in the long run. things that I hate more than anything is the damn iron-on patches because if you iron them on they never really actually stay down eventually that blue stuff on it just kind of wears down and they're more of a pain in the ass to pin down because that goop is really hard and thick. start laying everything out in the back of my vest. And once everything has the placement that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning stuff down. And especially for like back patches, I like to use a measuring tool just to make sure everything's even. Nothing's worse than pinning it and sewing it down and then trying it on and realizing that everything is not symmetrical.
Now that I got everything pinned down, I just tried it on just to make sure that everything looks right when I actually have it on. And I like where all my patches are, so I'm ready to get sewing. I'm using a sewing machine. You can sew by hand. I have a tutorial on that on my last battle vest video that I made. So you can check that out for some hand sewing tutorials. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be lazy and use my sewing machine. It's always good to start with a fresh needle and the proper needle. I have a denim sewing needle in here that's gonna work better for this nice thick fabric and these thick patches. I'm just using a reinforced straight stitch for all this. As you sew the patches down, just go ahead and guide them through with the sewing machine. Take your time and follow the guides of the patches. It's very tempting to just want to zoom through it all, but it'll come out a lot better if you just take your time, stop the machine, turn the garment. It also helps to keep the needle pointed down into the garment when you decide to make a turn. It'll hold everything in place so your thread doesn't come out. It looks like my needle came unthreaded, so I'm just fixing that real quick. It's also important to have all your pins facing the same way. It makes it a lot easier to pull them all out as you feed through the machine. So I was just adjusting that before I started sewing on this Opeth patch. The more you sew, the more you pick up little tips and tricks along the way. If anybody has any that I might not have mentioned in my videos, feel free to drop them in the comments because I always like to learn new things. I spent a long time sewing not knowing that you weren't just supposed to change the sewing needle every time the needle breaks, that you should actually sew it every time you've been sewing for a certain amount of hours or start a new project. I'm really surprised that my sewing machine has survived this many years with my learning curve. As you sew down your patches, you'll realize that some of the shapes are more difficult than others. The cattle decapitation patch that I have on this vest is probably going to be the biggest challenge of all of them, or maybe the trivium one. The two Opeth patches were probably the easiest ones to sew on this vest, since one was uh, just a straight circle and the other one is a square.
Let's Unleash the Archers patch sewn down. They're one of my favorite bands. I definitely love their music and I wish that I would have gotten the back patch, but I definitely like the Archspire one that I got for underneath there for the main patch on this vest. I got a lot of my patches for this vest off indie merch, and then I got a couple of them seeing the bands live, and then a few off of the band's official websites. As you can tell, even with this very sped up video, making a vest is definitely a time consuming process. So it definitely gives you a good appreciation for the work that goes into it once you make one on your own. Saved the worst patches for last, so I'm working on that Trivium one, which is a lot of fine little corners and lines. I definitely recommend doing this even if you're an experienced sewist, just because it's nice to kind of get warmed up before you take on the challenging parts of your project. Also, make sure that the bobbin is full before you start something with as many turns and corners as this, because nothing is more disheartening than sewing and sewing and sewing, and then realizing that you're just running a needle through with air and that your bobbin was empty the whole time and you sewed. It's just the worst feeling. Oh, and there's the moment, the moment where I realized I was sewing air. but it's okay. Take a moment, stretch, hate everything, rethread your bobbin. And then rethread your machine and get back at it.
trimming off some loose threads, and now I'm ready to sew the final patch, the challenge one, this cattle decapitation one, with all sorts of long little doodads that are gonna be a pain in the ass to work around all of the corners of the sewing machine. And like I mentioned before, when you come to a corner where you need to change direction with the sewing machine, it's best to stop it when the needle is into the garment and then lift up your presser foot, change the direction of your garment, put the pressure foot back down and continue to sew. You'll see how many times, even though this video is sped up where I stop, reposition the garment and then put the foot back down on the machine and continue to sew. This was also especially annoying because it was one of those iron-on patches, at which I never used the iron-on function because after a couple runs through the dryer, the glue wears off and you gotta sew it anyways. So why not just do it? It just makes it so much harder to sew through and to pin through. And that's the last patch. Everything is sewn down as it should be, and now it's time to start putting down some metal hardware. So I have some measuring tape and a little watercolor pencil. You can also use Taylor's chalk, or you could even use a Sharpie if you want, but it might kind of bleed through on the clothes, so I don't recommend that. I'm just using the measuring tape to measure equal distance between all these little dots that I'm making where I'm gonna put down all the rivets and studs. You don't have to do this step, but it definitely makes everything look a lot more cohesive and evenly spaced out. Now that I got everything marked up, I'm taking a sewing awl and just puncturing little holes all throughout this where I'm going to attach all my ribbons. If you don't have a sewing awl, you can use like a sewing needle, but a sewing awl is a really good tool to have if you're gonna be working with a lot of rivets and studs and that sort of stuff. It's especially useful on stuff like this thick denim. Now that I have all the little holes punctured through, I'm gonna start feeding the rivets through. So basically there is a, there's a piece that goes through the back that kind of looks like a little nipple, which is called the post. And you're just gonna feed that through the back and then you're gonna put the top piece, which is called the cap on over that uh, little post piece and push it until it snaps. Now when it snaps, it feels like it's secure in there, but you're still going to wanna set it either with a hand tool or with a press tool. very tedious putting all these through. I prefer to use a lot of the uh, rivets just because they set really nice and clean and they won't come out of your garment as easily as um, the like studs that have the little claw backs.
In this close-up footage, you can see a lot more clearly what I'm talking about with the post piece and the cap piece. So you can see that the post piece just goes through the back, and then the cap piece snaps right over that post piece. Now that I got pretty much half of the rivets onto my vest, I'm going to show you how to set all of these. I'm going to use the tool that's to the right of me, which is my stud press. There's little pieces that go into it that match each particular style of rivet that you're going to use. There's a bottom piece and a top piece that screws into there. Now that I have both of these pieces attached, I'm going to place the cap facing down into the bottom piece, and then I'm going to have the post on top, and just pull down on the lever and it'll set each one in place. These are still tedious, but they're much less tedious than the clawback rivets or studs. And using the uh, stud press is definitely a lot less time consuming than doing all these with a hand tool definitely a tool worth investing in. And I just repeated the process on the other side. For the collar, since it's a really nice thick double layer, I'm actually going to use some of those clawback studs that I was talking about. I got these nice cone studs and they just have two prongs on the back. So I'm putting two holes that I've measured the appropriate space of with my measuring tool. And I'm poking holes with that sewing awl and then feeding the little prongs through the back then folding them down with the pliers. Some people use a butter knife in place of pliers. I much prefer the pliers, it's much easier, but you know, in a pinch, if you're low on supplies, it'll do. I just repeated that process all over the call. And here is how the finished project looks. Thanks for crafting with me. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below on what kind of projects you want to see in the future. 